Hello everyone, welcome back to the Syntax UK YouTube channel. My name is Matt and today I'm going to be bringing you episode 4 of our Syntax Explained series. In this episode I'll be taking a look at our first digital audio format, ADAT. First up, a brief explanation of the difference between analog and digital audio signals. Generally speaking, analog audio covers everything in a studio that either makes or records sound. So this is things like microphones and electronic instruments like keyboards and synthesizers. And it also includes devices that physically play back audio. So guitar amplifiers, speakers and headphones. Digital audio, on the other hand, is simply information stored as ones and zeros, which can then be understood by a computer or other digital device. This is extremely useful for transporting audio, as it allows you to send multiple tracks down a single digital cable, unlike in an analog system where you would need a separate cable for each microphone or instrument. Digital cabling is also immune to the sort of interference that analog cabling can suffer from, such as ground loops, or electrical noise. In order for us to record these analog sources to digital, we first need to convert the analog signal to a digital one via an analog to digital converter, also known as an A to D. Equally, for us to be able to hear these digital audio signals, the information has to be converted back to an analog signal via a digital to analog converter, or D2A. You might have already guessed that ADDA converters are found in a wide range of devices, from your smartphone, laptop, or iPad, to music production equipment like digital mixing consoles and audio interfaces. It's worth noting, however, in Pro Audio, the term ADDA converter is used in reference to a specific piece of gear, a standalone device like the Ferrofish Pulse 16, which is used for expanding the number of analog channels available in a recording setup. ADA is a digital audio format that can carry up to eight channels on a single cable, and is commonly used for transporting audio between two devices in a studio. Nowadays, ADA is cheap, easy to use and found on a wide variety of pro audio gear. But when it first arrived on the recording scene, ADAT was near revolutionary. In 1991, Alesis announced an eight track digital audio recorder called the Alesis Digital Audio Tape Recorder. Whereas previously digital audio recording was reserved only for large professional recording studios, when ADAT machines first appeared, they offered digital audio recording at a price point that, whilst not necessarily cheap, made digital multi-track recording available for independent musicians and smaller studios. Up to eight tracks of audio could be recorded simultaneously at sample rates up to 48 kilohertz directly to an SVHS or Super VHS tape and multiple units could be synced together to provide even more channels. And whilst ADAT recorders themselves are long forgotten, the ADAT format has been adopted by pro audio equipment manufacturers as a way of sending audio between all kinds of different devices. So why is ADAT so widely used, even after 30 years on the scene? Well, simply put, it remains a simple and inexpensive way of connecting multiple devices together in a studio. For example, you may already have an audio interface that allows you to record directly using its analog connections, such as microphone preamps and line level I.O. But what if you want to record more microphone channels than your interface can handle? Well, if your interface has ADAT I.O., you could connect an 8-channel microphone preamp to your interface via ADAT, and this would allow you to record 8 more microphone channels at the same time directly into your DAW. As with the original ADAT machines, eight channels of uncompressed audio can be sent at sample rates of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz via a single Toslink cable, which is a type of fiber optic cable designed by Toshiba, short for Toshiba Link. Also known as ADAT light pipe, Toslink cables are cheap and very easy to use with a small square connector at both ends that plugs into the ADAT port. They're the same cables used for the digital audio connections in a host of consumer products like media players, games consoles, and Blu-ray players, although these tend to use a slightly different two-channel format called SPDIF, which we'll talk about later in this video. So if you're a home studio user or have a smaller project studio, 
you can use two ADAT light pipe cables to unlock eight extra channels in each direction, which is a great option for adding more microphones, instruments, or other hardware to your studio. ADAT can also be used for recording at higher sample rates, like 96 or 192 kilohertz, using a technology called sample multiplexing, or SMUX. Be aware, however, that doubling the sample rate requires twice the bandwidth, meaning that each time you increase the sample rate, you half the number of channels available for recording. In other words, 96 kilohertz allows you to transfer up to four channels each way via ADAT, whereas 192 kilohertz gives you two channels in each direction. As mentioned previously, ADAT is still found today on a wide range of devices in the studio, including digital mixing desks, audio interfaces, microphone preamps, and ADDA converters. From our brands here at Synthax, both RME and Ferrofish devices continue to feature ADAT I.O. And I'm gonna talk you through a few examples of those now. The convenience and flexibility of the ADAT format led RME to design the Digiface USB, a pocket-sized ADAT only interface. Using only four pairs of ADAT I.O., the Digiface USB can transport a total of 64 channels of digital audio to and from a computer via USB. RME's larger format audio interfaces also feature ADAT as part of their digital connectivity offering. Interfaces like the Fireface 802, UFX2 and UFX3 feature two sets of ADAT I.O., making it possible to add an extra 16 channels of audio to a recording setup with just four extra cables. The portable RME Babyface Pro FS is also equipped with ADAT I.O., meaning that whilst the interface remains a fantastic mobile recording device for smaller channel counts, it's as simple as connecting two ADAT cables to a microphone preamp like the RME 12 mic or an ADDA converter like Ferrofish's Pulse 16 for recording more instruments or microphones. Speaking of the Ferrofish Pulse 16, this 1U ADDA converter offers users an additional 16 analog inputs and 16 analog outputs from just two pairs of ADAT I.O. It's a fantastic option for producers, musicians and composers looking for a way of getting hardware instrument and outboard gear into their DAW. It's also an ideal device for bringing a small analog mixing desk into the digital realm as well as for connecting multiple pairs of speakers for mixing in 5.1 surround sound and Dolby Atmos. Yeah, All of the Pulse 16 models it are it also is, available right. with DC nice coupled outputs, um, which are ideal for sending control voltages to modular synthesizers. For those looking to record more microphones, a microphone preamp like the RME 12 mic can be connected via ADAT too. This next generation 12 channel preamp also features a range of other connectivity, such as audio networking in the form of AVB and Dante, as well as MADI connectivity, which is another digital audio format which we will break down in another episode in this series. As mentioned previously, the Toslink connector was originally designed by Toshiba for home audio and hi-fi usage, though it's also capable of carrying the two-channel consumer format SPDIF, which we will come onto in a moment. RME's ADDAs like the ADI2 series DAC and Pro FSR have the ability to process both ADAT and SPDIF, meaning you can use a Toslink cable to connect with an interface for mastering quality monitoring. SPDIF stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface, and it was designed by those two companies as a way of interfacing their digital home equipment. It's essentially a consumer version of another digital format used in pro audio and broadcast circles called AES3 or AES-EBU. Whilst ADAT was designed as a professional format that can transport up to eight channels, SPDIF was intended as a stereo consumer format and is therefore limited to two channels. This is irrespective of sample rate though, meaning that SPDIF can still send two channels of uncompressed PCM audio at 96 or 192 kilohertz sample rate. You'll also find SPDIF in home cinema setups as it can be used to send six channels of compressed audio for use in 5.1 surround sound. 
Note, however, that whilst an audio interface may be able to pass this AC3 or DTS enabled signal, you'll probably still need a decoder to use it for 5.1 as audio interfaces generally only use SPDIF for passing stereo signals. Unlike ADAT, which is available only via optical toslink cables, SPDIF comes in the form of both optical and coaxial connections, as can be seen on the back of the RME ADI2 DAC FS, a product designed primarily for the home and hi-fi market. These connectors will be pretty recognisable if you've ever connected any home audio equipment, using the same red and white connectors that are found on analog RCA and phono connections, and are often found on equipment such as DJ mixers, amplifiers and some studio monitors. Although analog connections like phono and line use the same connector type, phono and line require analog cabling, whereas SPDIF requires digital cabling, so the two are not compatible. Whilst expanding a recording setup with ADA is as simple as connecting two light pipe cables, it's worth noting that working in the digital realm requires another step to make two devices work together seamlessly, known as word clock. You may have come across terms like sync and digital clocking in audio production and sound engineering, and this is something that we're gonna cover much more deeply in a future episode of Synthax Explains. But for now, it's enough to know that all digital audio devices have their own internal clock, which control the time timing of the audio, and when working with two or more devices you'll need to synchronise them with one another. This protects against potential signal degradation and ensures that everything is sample accurate. Word clock can usually be carried down the same digital cable that is being used for the audio, whether that be an ADAP Toslink cable or a coaxial SPDIF cable. Many pro audio devices have dedicated word clock I.O., allowing you to transmit word clock via BNC cables. Most devices in the studio will allow you to input and output a word clock signal, and you'll need to choose one device to be the clock master and set all the others as slaves. RME's latest generation of audio interfaces feature very accurate master clocking called Steady Clock FS, which you can learn more about through the video linked in the description box below. So that's it for our look at ADA. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please do make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you get to see all of the future episodes as this series continues to grow. If you'd like a bit more information on any of the topics covered in this video, then you can check out the written article on our website via the link in the description box below. Thanks very much guys and I will see you again next time.